Awesome, kicking off the fun segment of this pod. Uh, first up, Goranch, uh, you've been on the online education bit for a bit. Um, do you think online learning is the future of education, at least from an India point of view? Mm-hmm. I think that's a that's an interesting question. I think uh, the it is definitely it is definitely there to last. A lot of us uh, and but again, there there are user cohorts to which it belongs to. I think a user cohort that is disciplined and you know is has that willingness for the next career switch, has the willingness for the next upskilling, has the willingness to do better in their job, or that willingness to career transition. For them, edtech is here to last. Uh, edtech and online learning is here to last because you're working a job and you simultaneously want to study. You want the best product, best tools available to you at your disposal. Secondly, uh, secondly, you know, not everybody can go to quota. Some it it because it's hard to be there, right? It's hard to be there and you know be in that space and learn. So when you're at your home, you're at ease and you can, but you still have access to the best of best educators, which would not be possible without without online learning. You can't probably go and learn from Namukol if you were not on an academy, an academy's online platform. Right. Uh, so so I think that would be one answer. Same is with same goes with Gate and Cat, by the way, as well. You are working while you're preparing for CAT and you are working while you're preparing for GATE. So these things yeah. would be possible if you did not have online or ed tech space. So I am very pro ed tech and pro online learning. I think it'll, it is your to stay and do wonders. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, uh, follow up to that. Uh, they say, at least for consumer apps, uh, India is more of a DAO firm, right? India, Indian users don't end up paying. Um, I have a theory that that's not true for marriage education, at least from an India point of view. Um, any data, any numbers that you've seen that back this up? What's your thought? Yeah, so one thing I can tell you is that India India functions out of motivation when it comes to education. No, India functions out of emotion when it comes to education. And I think I said motivation earlier, so it's emotion. Uh, a, a parent wants to give his child the, child the best resources when it comes to learning. English medium school mein padna chahiye, government school nahi jana chahiye, right? Oh. Sabse achhe tutor hone chahiye, maths ka ek laga do, science ka ek laga do, English ka ek laga do. All those theories, right? So, I, so our parents definitely, people might definitely shy, we as consumers might shy away from paying, but a parent will never shy away from paying for his son's or daughter's education because he knows, because he, he has that trust that, you know, if I don't provide my child with the best education, nothing's not going to work out. Okay. So like you said, education may, there is going to be, um, uh, paying is not that big a problem, right? Agreed. If I Agreed. had to point out one more thing to you, like, like I learned, I play guitar, like I picked up guitar a year and a half ago. I started off with random YouTube videos here and there. But later on, I got a subscription for an academy course in guitar, which I paid for and a front row subscription. So okay. what I'm trying to say is that at the end of the day, internet does not have structure. And people who act were serious about it want structure and that structure comes when you join a program. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that is some, that probably would be my answer. Oh, agreed. agreed. One um, might be slightly controversial, but uh, since you mentioned, okay, um, in edtech, especially K-12, uh, parents pay for their kids and that's a big motivator. You want your child to study in the best, but that also brings a lot of mis-selling, right? Is what we've seen in the Indian ecosystem. How does one tackle that, right? If you were a product person here, how do you tackle to make the education system fair and uh, not just, uh, uh, you know, prying on this motivation or this fear of parents that they want the best education and hence there's tons and tons of mis-selling that's happening. Hmm. I think that is a good question. I think uh, two things that we should look at over there. One is affordability. Uh, and second one is, uh, and second one is your, your, your target cohorts. Going and probably going and selling to a farm labor's child a program on a BNPL scheme is definitely wrong. But if you understand your TG and if your product is affordable, then definitely go and reach out to the right kind of people uh, for those uh, for for whatever for whatever resources you have to offer. Fair. And I yeah, so I think that is probably what my my take is over there. And I am. I think I'm not, I, mean, I think I'm kind of proud to say that the edtech firms that I have been involved with so far are very ethical when it comes to these things, the way they function. And because I, because I work at an academy, I can tell you how learner-centric we are. 
So now we cannot guarantee that someone will get into an, get into IIT, but what we can guarantee is best resources for you to get into IIT. And I think everyone at an academy is logging to just ensure that those best resources are available to a learner. Nice, nice. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Garanj, if you weren't doing product management, then what? I would be building toilets right now. What? Yeah, I did. Civil what is the story here? Yeah, I did civil engineering because I wanted to change the world one toilet at a time. Oh, okay. When I was in 11th, I was in the United Nations conference uh, talking about rural sanitation in India. Okay. And to me, it was the biggest problem to solve. Right? right. I was like, if we don't solve sanitation, if we cannot get someone to sit in a two by two room to, you know, to relieve themselves, then we are probably struggling as a society somewhere, which is something which we act, which we take for granted, but is sparsely, sparsely available in our public spaces. Right, 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 right. So I think that is probably that. Uh, I think that is something that I would be working with. I would either be at Sulab or some organization like this working and seeing how we can get better toilets out there. Is that something that you're still passionate about? Are you looking to do something on the side there? Is that uh, or maybe in the long term? Yeah, so I think uh, I think the tool, tools are out there. Okay. So I think that is why I sort of transitioned away from civil because I realized okay. it's not a it's not a engineering problem. It's a social problem. Fair enough. And uh, I don't know, I, to be very honest with you, I've not had the time since I've finished college to actually sit down and think about it. Mm-hmm. How to solve that social problem. Got it. But yeah, if I ever, if I was not a PM, I would definitely be doing this. Fair enough, fair enough. Say that even, okay, now that you are a PM, what was the last lie that you said as an associate product manager? I will add it to the backlog and get back to you. When, <laughs> when yeah, start. I think that is that is a common problem. That is a common problem. Is there one thing that you hate about product management? Hmm. Mm, I it's not something that I hate about product, product management, but I find find this amusing that people sometimes come to me with very big feature requirements. They're like, let's launch a referral. And I'm like, yeah, good, good suggestion. And they're like, okay, I'll do it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll build the whole FL system with design. I'll take my tomorrow <laughs> for you on the platform. Yeah, no, that's some of the craziest requirements that come, right? Yeah, I think that is, prioritization is something that is very, very tough to Correct. crack. And that involves a lot of hard conversations as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a soft-spoken person, but I'm not someone who, you know, goes out and fights. Something, when something goes on, I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, let's work around it. So yeah. I think I, as a PM, I have to have those hard conversations without that my job is incomplete. So yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, Garanj, you've been a volunteer with TPF. What would you say are the biggest advantages of that? Hmm. I could directly WhatsApp so ask Motwani and ask why, <laughs> why is everyone congratulating him on Twitter? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. Think, that was the um, thing. Yeah, but I think kidding aside, I think it's it's the people you meet, the kind of friends you make, and the kind of mentorship you find. So I think it's 100%. the people part, it's the whole people section of friends, mentors, etc. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think you utilize it in the best way. I think mentorship is something I've seen some of the volunteers transition get jobs just directly via people they've met with, and. Um, I think for volunteers, I think I keep saying this to everyone, regardless of what you contribute, how much you contribute, at least make friends and go, right? I've made some of the best friends I hang out with today, like some people that I've worked with um, at TPF. No? So I think uh, post-college, especially most of us are, you know, working. And uh, with that, outside of office, how else do you make friends, right? So I think volunteering with TPF has been one of those outlets for me as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, lastly, um, You've joined an academy um, maybe about half a year ago, but um, what are you looking specifically forward to over the next two, three years? Hmm. I think uh, I've not thought of things, um, so I'm not taking things in that longer spectrum. I think that I'm definitely, work-wise, I'm definitely looking at a promotion. I want to become a PM. Nice. Uh, so I'm working towards it. I know, and there are a lot of factors involved. All I can do is put in that work and expect. And you know, I'm hope. So I'm probably, I'm doing that for sure. Uh, I think in the last two years of working, I've, I've sort of neglected my health and I see that how it would become like a, you know, like a big problem if I don't solve that for that right now. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, I'm sol- trying to solve for that right now. And third thing is that I have, uh, I have seen the benefits of picking up an instrument oh, to nice. my own mental sanity. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is something that I am planning to, you know, get double down on, see how I can get better, etc. Yeah. Yeah. No, since, since you mentioned that, actually, I think uh, very few people talk about it. Um, as a product manager, I think it's, um, we deal with uh, 
one it, it is a stressful job right number one and number two uh, there's just so much fomo around you also right like it, it can be fomo on salaries there's lots of comparison there then uh, you might be doing great where you are at but then your friend might be doing better somewhere else uh, not just product management i think this is across the tech industry across industries uh, do you sometimes feel uh, inadequate at what you're doing uh, or do you feel this fomo and how do you deal with it hmm uh i think to matlab in hindi right we say ki koi nahi kar lenge uh so for one thing i definitely do is that if i'm feeling overwhelmed i get away from my system okay i get away from my laptop and uh, and i start you know i start either playing it or something like that nice. for a very long time i thought fitness would be that for me but you cannot but india is not a place where you just pick up shoes and go start running whenever you want to you can't do that so i think that's why having like having guitar keeps me very being able to play guitar keeps me very very sane and ensures that you know i'm sticking to uh i'm sticking to uh, something that keeps takes me out of work nice. makes me have a skill where i am not comparing myself to someone else when it comes to improvement and that is one thing for sure and second thing is just knowing that you know that everyone has their own journey and uh, how it's just five steps or a month and you will be there by the other yeah. person it's a month effort you know how people say that if you work very hard for six months it puts you two years ahead in life or something like that yeah the quote in on those lines and i and i'm a very strong believer in it so i think yeah definitely the amount of effort we put in right now is definitely setting ourselves in a better place for you for the future right. yeah right. no thanks so much for sharing that i think it is that step function like you mentioned right uh sometimes you just need to get away from it you know sometimes the best ideas come in a shower right because you're not really thinking that it's just like outside of you not in front of your system so very similarly i think do something tangentially break away from it and come back to that. that's a great advice garan should be in a wonderful wonderful chat today i think it's been a good good one hour of this but thanks so much for joining us i think uh, i'm yeah. sure you'll get lots of dms after this asking you for lots of advice to break into uh, an academy but thanks so much for joining us today this was a fantastic chat i think if i want to just add like one one tiny bit to just tell people about the impact ppf has had you should go and check vijesh bhardwaj this twitter and see one place where he's called out on shayar to join him uh, as a oh, yes. game, uh, at uh, sampe oh, definitely show the way at a pack you created yeah in fact uh, shayan breaking into fampe was one of the most fun stories right today okay. when volunteer asking i think uh, that's one story that i said in fact see, he met uh, via insojo itself right he was volunteering on office hours you know i to brijesh for office hours shayan was handling that right mm-hmm. they connected there then three months later when shayan was like looking for something else brijesh like dude why don't you come join me itself and that conversation kicked off so i think a lot of organic conversations i think uh, when people talk about networking right this is this is probably the closest that comes to rather than sending 100 dms make five quality relationships that turn up into something if you don't make it for the sake of okay hey that i want to work these all happen sir it's about serendipity right here you're just increasing your surface area and that's why you're making more opportunities for yourself so yeah that's for sure uh, thank you so much for us for having me i think this was a great conversation went a little right. long for sure but i had a great time thank no, this you. was fantastic i think uh, having you on the pod also was a refresher of sorts right you get to uh, learn both sides of the story but at the same time i've seen that on a closer basis so i know you know some points that i wanted to go deeper on so this was awesome thanks goranch once thanks. again thanks for us